Brothers and sisters, I am thankful for this opportunity. I know your time is precious and I would not waste it. Daniel 9, 24 says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish thy transgressions and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting, everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. We serve a God like no other God. There are those who make gods of wood, metal, gold, but these gods cannot do nothing to help them. We had a need that needed to be met, and our God met it through Christ Jesus. Before Christ, we were born into sin and could do nothing to change that. It didn't matter if you made offerings. God went to great extent to show that if you lived your life and did, it, did everything he asked and made offerings and sacrifices, you still came up short. It wasn't enough. There wasn't, there wasn't anything that we could do. But God, this is how good our God is. He, he took this and, and took the time to show through the law that you needed Jesus. That without Christ, it was impossible. It was impossible for us to dwell with our God. We could not be with our God. We had to be separated. So God went through great lengths to show his people. Jesus' death on the cross took away sin. We are free to live holy and righteous lives before our God. Freedom from self. For our righteousness are filthy rags. Free to seek him and to find him. Knowing, knowing that we will be acceptable in his presence because of Christ Jesus. So now what we are doing here, brethren, at this Refreshing Waters Renewal, with our lives as we break up every morning, crucifying the flesh, putting on the armor of God, denying ourselves, as we're getting ready to meet our God. This is the purpose of our life here and now, is to get ready to be with our God. If you're not using your day from the time you wake up in the morning, if you're not using every moment you can to make ready to be with your God, you have wasted the day. Amen. You have just spent a wasted, pointless day. Because our, the point of us being here is to be ready to meet our God. Amen. We were servants of sin, but now we are free from sin to be servants of righteousness. Amen. Romans 6, 17 through 18. If you are living in sin, God will not be with you. His blessing will not be on you. He will have nothing to do with you. I know this goes contrary to things that are being said today, but it must be said that if you continue to live for the world, God will not be with you. Amen. Amen. We are free, brethren, but now that the Lamb of God has come, which taketh away sin of the world, John 1, 29, we can now live holy, just as our God is holy. 
we can be prepared to meet our God. Amen. What does everlasting righteousness mean? Does it mean that we are good parents? Does it mean that we live good lives? Does it mean that we have good with our finances? Does it mean that we are just good people? Sometimes I think if you listen to the radio long enough, you might think that that's exactly what it means. But everlasting righteousness means that we can be with our God for eternity and never go out again. No more tears. No more heartaches. No more pain. We're going to be with our God, and we, it's not going to run out. It's everlasting righteousness. Many people, brethren, are not prepared to meet God. I want to be faithful and to talk a little bit about what just recently happened to me. There are some of my family who have heard this over and over again, but I'm probably going to continue to talk about it because God did a mighty work with me on May 22nd. I was in bed ready to prepare myself to go to church Sunday night, but God had other things in store for me. Nikki came and got me, woke me up, and I'm going to make this version for my sermon's sake. I'm going to make it quick to get to the point of what I'm talking about that I see that fits with the sermon. But we got into the bathroom, and our whole family was there. And the first thing that I knew happened that I knew that this was going to be bad was the window started blowing up around us. It was like surround sound. It came from the back and just one window after another. I can hear it in my head now. It just exploded. Bam, 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 bam. And I thought for that first second, brethren, that I am going to go be with my God. I'm going to be at the throne of God. And I tell you, there was nothing better than the feeling I had thinking that Jesus was going to be there. I had a good feeling that knowing that my God was going to accept me at that moment. For that split second, I had no doubt that I was going to die. I already had it in my mind, this is going to be like going into surgery. I'm going to be out, and then I'm going to be at the throne. And I was ready. I had been preparing. We had a good service Sunday morning. I don't live my life for this world. I don't live my life unholy, unrighteous, immoral. But I knew that I was not going to be accepted without Jesus Christ. So the thought of him being there filled my heart with joy. In the midst of destruction around me, I had peace. And then right after that, that's when I, the Lord did not audibly speak to me, but I knew he was saying, Nobody, nobody's going to die. Nobody in your house is going to die. And we talked about the angels being dispatched. I had this vision of an angel just wrapping his wings around our family. Now, if you've seen pictures, and you go on my Facebook and you can see the pictures, there is nothing left of my house but a pile of complete flat house, except for the spot that we are in. There was this one spot that we were in that was completely clear. It was like God purposely, his mercy showed that there's no other way that this could happen except for I protected you. That I had my hand on you. Amen. And as I was, we, we took off walking and I seen people down the street lighting up cigarettes right away. And how foolish this seat looked to me. Right after God's hand went through Joplin. Yeah. And then the ungodly continued with their ungodliness. This is hard-hearted, brethren. 
called towards God. My awareness of righteousness was peaking high at this point. I wanted nothing to do with sin. I wanted to be, I wanted to be holy, righteous for the Lord. My thoughts were, were to prepare more. I knew that God had saved me, but death was still coming. And I wanted to be ready. This is how God is, he is making a way for his people to be ready. To be with him. Now is the time to be ready. How good it felt, brethren, at that point, knowing that I was clean because of Jesus Christ. There was no better feeling that I had ever had in my life. I was very sober and aware of God. And I was very much thankful to my God that because of Jesus Christ, I was clean and ready to meet him. It was because of Jesus Christ. Sin, by the death of Jesus, has been put away. We now can make preparation to be with our God. This is what these renewals are about. We're helpers of one another. Helpers to prepare. As my house exploded, I was not thinking about the things in my house. I was thinking about meeting my God. When you're faced with death, priorities change. Very quick. My priority has continued to be, from that time, to seek my God and be righteous and holy in all my ways. Romans 8.12 says, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. This is because of Jesus, brethren. It's because of Jesus Christ that God can do this. As long as we are in Christ, the wrath of God will not fall on us because of sin. But we must be in Christ. We cannot be clinging to the world and still have the righteousness of God. It can't be done. You can't have both. You have to deny yourself, give up the things of the world, and cling to Jesus Christ. Brother, I would not, I would have a hard time thinking that anyone hearing my voice today has a problem with sin. But if you do, if there's an area that you're having a problem with, run to Jesus today. Get rid of whatever it is that's hindering you. We have an advocate. He is there waiting for you. Today is the day. Tonight is not promised to you. I know all too well that tonight is not promised to us. My next breath is not promised to us, brother. There are some who, they are, at the time of the storm, they're in storm shelters. But we could have not been more protected in a storm shelter than we were by that sheet of dry, drywall that was on top of us when it was all said and done. It was not our time. You could be in a storm shelter and have a heart attack and die. When it's time, you want to be ready. And God is preparing his people to be ready. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. 2 Corinthians 5.21 We are talking about what Christ has accomplished on our behalf this week, brethren. He has made it that we can be ready to be with our God. No matter how much punishment God could place on us, it could not take away our sin. We need Jesus. The just for the unjust that he might bring us to God. 1 Peter 3.8 It's Jesus and only Jesus that can bring us to God. 
Without Christ, no hope. It doesn't matter if you think you live a good life, if you think that you're doing everything right, without Jesus, you have no hope. This is why it is wrong to question God. Why did this happen or why did that happen? Why did God allow people to, you know, go on with the, what you've heard people say? It's wrong. God is perfect and just and holy in all his ways. He has made a way for us to be with him, and that's the point. Yes, we're going to have suffering. Yes, we're going to have loss. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you suffered as long as you suffered for Christ's Amen. sake. Amen. God is merciful to his people. Amen. There will come a day that the wrath of God will be unleashed on unrighteousness. But for those in Christ, he is a protector. He is tender. He's ready to save. The point is, because of Christ, we can be ready. Having everlasting righteousness. A righteousness that God, you can be in the presence of God and you will not be cast out. God's righteousness, not our own. What we could not do, Jesus did. Our punishment was placed on Jesus. Jesus was cursed for us. So we see, it's not what we have done, it's God who placed us in Jesus. Amen. I know that it's hard for some to understand this, and I know that I'm talking to brethren who do understand, but God chose you. Amen. He picked you out. He has placed you right here today to be built up and to be ready for when either you meet death or when Jesus returns. One of those two are going to happen soon. Whether or not you're ready, that's what matters. It's not what kind of education you had, unless it's the education on Christ Jesus. It's not, it's not what kind of job you have. It's not what kind of wealth that you've accumulated. It's what have you done with Jesus? But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. First Corinthians 1, 3, uh, 30 through, th thank you, 1, 30 through 31. We can now be close to our God, brethren. Because of Jesus, we can enter the most holy place Amen. where our God is, and we can stay there. We don't have to go out. This is where the throne of God is. Our God who is merciful, he will help you. Is this what you want? I know, brethren, it is. This is what I want, too. Jesus can make it happen. We have not yet made it to glory, but we have access to God through Jesus Christ to get what we need. And we need to be righteous, God's righteousness. Jesus made a way to God. Let us therefore, brethren, come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Hebrews 4.16 Before Christ, this was not done. You could not come to the throne. You had to stay back. But now we can come. Now we have access. But now the blood of Jesus sprinkled to 
purify the holy place. Not our righteousness, brethren, but God's righteousness. We can enter in. We can stay as long as we want. We can get as much as we want. We don't have to go out anymore. Amen. Yes, we are going to have to fight a good fight. Yes, yes, we are going to have to run a good race all the way to the end. You can't give up. You can't let up. You can't back down. But in the end, it's going to be worth it. Amen. You're not going to get to glory and be unsatisfied. You're not going to get to glory and think, I gave up everything in the world for this? You're going to get to glory and say, I'm glad I gave up that for this. Amen. God, through Daniel, prophesied what he was going to do, and nothing could stop it. This is the way God works. Remember in the beginning? He talked about the head of Satan being bruised. What could stop that? Right from the get-go, he said, this is what I'm going to do, and this is the way it is. Nothing can stop it. Our God is eager, brethren, to save. Our God is eager to show what he's doing. He showed through Daniel way back there what he was doing with Christ. He couldn't wait a little while? No, he couldn't. He's eager, brethren. He's eager to show us what he's doing. He's eager to be with those who love him. If you are desiring to be with your God, he is making a way to be with you. He's making a way that there's no other way that it can happen. But our God is a merciful God. God was eager. Just like as long as we abide in Christ, we will not sin and we will be accepted by God. Nothing can stop it as long as we stay in Christ. Now, there are things in the world that will tug us away. There are things that can distract us. But as long as you abide in Christ, you will not sin. I know that there are people who say, well, we all, we're all just sinners saved by grace. It's a lie. Because God said, we don't have to sin. We're set free. We're no longer slaves to sin. We're free to live righteous and holy lives to please our God. We have a new heart and a new spirit. We are no longer dominated by sin. But we can be dominated by Jesus Christ, by being renewed day by day, by being built up and strengthened, that we can be victorious. In Christ, we are victorious. We are, we are warriors that can, are, we are conquerors in, in Christ Jesus. For man to have everlasting righteousness, God had to do it. He used Jesus to get it done. Jesus took away the sins of the world. God did not accept us, brethren, as we were in sin. Today, again, we have a teaching that God accepts you just the way you are. This is like spitting in Jesus' eye. This is like trampling over what Christ has done. If he accepts you just the way you are, why did our Lord and Savior have to come and die on the cross? Amen. He had to die because we were not accepted. But in Christ, now we are accepted. Amen. In Christ Jesus, we are well-pleasing to God. Amen. Jesus' death was not for nothing. Our acceptance to God is because of our sin is really gone as far as the east is to the west. It's been taken away. 
There's not just a little bit left. You can't just have a little bit and get to glory. It's got to be completely gone. And because of Christ, it is. God is just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus, Romans 3.26. To be with God, we can't be a little righteous. We must have God's righteousness. Do you believe in Jesus? Well, you could be accepted by God. Amen. By you believing in Christ. By you believing, you are accepted. Amen. You are righteous and holy. In Christ Jesus, we have everlasting righteousness. To be with our God forever. A righteousness from God that will not fade away. That just sounds good to me, brother. Amen. Especially when you're faced with death. Well, I thought it was pending death. Yes. To know that I am righteous and going to be accepted because of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, one of the main things that we as believers do is prepare one another to meet death. We want to die well. We want to be able to say, death, I've looked forward to you coming. Now I am ready to meet my God. Amen. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Romans 1.17 You believe in God? You believe that he has sent his son to die for you? You will not fail. You will make it all the way. God will not fail you. He is not a God that is a weak God. A God that makes promises that he cannot come through. Our God, when he says it, is done. It is God's righteousness, so it will not fade away or get old. Without Jesus, this would not be done, but with Jesus, it has been done. We, do, we will be with our God. Nothing that offends will be in glory. Amen. I tell you, brethren, like I said, right after we got out of our house, which was not a house anymore. It was a pile of rubble. And we walked down the street and we got picked up by a woman that was in a brand new Cadillac that was nice and warm for our whole family to get into without a scratch on it. Just one thing after another, I see how the Lord sent people to take care of us. People all over the street and this lady rolls her window down and says, do you need help? Yeah? Get in! We got in, and we were able to tell Brother Aaron where we were at, and he came and got us. I never, he never looked so good in my life. Him running down the street in his suit, he looked really good to me. But when Brother Aaron and I went back to go look for our, my dogs, we seen people lighting up cigarettes and doing just the foolish things that flesh does. And I said to him, doesn't this look foolish to you now? No, it looked foolish before. But even more so when destruction is all around. And they're this close to dying. This is the way flesh is. If you let a little bit in, It'll take a hold, and before you know it, you'll go down a road that you never thought you would go down before. It doesn't matter who you are. You may say, I, oh, that is so terrible. I would never do that. No, brother, you would do that. Flesh, no, there's no end to sin. It will take you down a road that you will, you will not come back. It's not a time to play games. Not after what Jesus has done for us. 
not after what he's accomplished for us, for, for someone to play games with God, this is, this is the ultimate foolishness. Now, I don't need to go through a list of what is right or wrong. That's why we have the, the Holy Spirit to, to work on us, to help us along. But it's just complete foolishness after what we've seen. So, if you hate sin, and I hate it, and I know you do, brother, what offends God is not going to be in glory. We could take joy in knowing that our God is going to be there, our Savior is going to be on the right hand of the Father. And everything that offends, everything that we've been fighting against, will not be there because of our, our Lord and Savior. Matthew 13, 41 through 43 says, The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all that offend, and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine. Shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Amen. Brethren, we serve a good God. What Christ has accomplished, we will see more when we get over to the other side. But God has opened this up to us. He's opened this up to us. This, this, this time of refreshing waters renewal, he's opened this up to us so that we could go over it and be blessed by it. And our joy may be overflowing that our God is a, such a good God that he has sent us a Savior that has met our need. He is pleased with us. We do not have to wonder, am I accepted? When you're on your deathbed, you won't have to say, will I get all the way to glory? Because of Christ Jesus, brethren, you will make it all the way to glory. Thank you, brethren.